Okay, so um, time to get the kids involved. Uh, we're going to do our little reading now. Uh, if you have a Bible on your phone, I put it on the screen thinking it would be big enough. It clearly isn't big enough. Um, barely for me. So if you want to grab a Bible, you can please do that. Um, if you've got it on your phone, that's just as good. Uh, wave it to me. Let me know. Um, but we're in Mark chapter 5, um, verse 21. We're going to miss a little section out. We're going to do some drama today. Any uh, amateur dramatics in the room? Good start. <laughs> we will be picking on you. <laughs> this is Emma, everyone. Let's all say hi to Emma. Hi. Fantastic. Uh, Emma is our new youth minister. Soon to be. Rob point two. Rob point two. Less beardy and homeless looking. Um, so we need. So- what, well, Emma? Over to you. Well. Yeah, uh, we had the idea that we thought it'd be fun to act, read the story and act it out and get everyone involved. We thought it might stick in your minds a little bit more if you were wearing a fake beard. So we have got, uh, we're going to read the passage. We will be, let me go, Jesus in the front row. <laughs> Father Christmas, I don't know. Um, we'll, be, we'll be reading it out. We'll be kind of directing you, but we've got, we've got Jesus, we've got a soldier. If anyone feels like when... They'll need a nap during the preach. There is a young girl who could... Yeah. Like, what? You don't have to be a young girl. There's a nap place here. <laughs> um, and there's the rabble. We've got tea towels, policemen, builders' hats. So we're welcoming people to yes. come up and get dressed and get involved. Looking we at thought you. the young people yes. would like it. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so, kids, do you want to come on up? Um, please don't be afraid of me. I'm actually really friendly. Um, but do come up. We need some people. Uh, yeah. Guys back there. Jim, looking at Blythe, you, buddy. Arthur, Josh. We need some kids. Um, even big Ethan. kids, too. Jess, looking at you if you want. Cool. Um, jokes. Uh, Sasha, dare I say it. Nathan. No. Um, we need some people to be uh, various roles. Is that right, Emma? Yes, that is. So um, we've, we need a Jesus. Who feels that they could be a Jesus. You'd like to be a soldier. We've got... Well, I already clearly You'd like to like be him, Jesus? Okay, so there is some blue cloths. You yes, can Ethan. put yourself in those, wrap them around, sort of get a bit Jesus-y. The most Christ-like. I am using the microphone. We've <laughs> also got... Uh, we need some disciples. We need Peter. We need James. And John. Need John. So, disciples. Okay, nice one, buddy. We've got tea towels. We've got headgear. Okay, who's you the don't disciple? want to be a disciple. Would you like to be the young girl who's having a nap? Who wants to be Peter because they get the chicken hat? You'd like, you'd like a nap. Go on then. No, get in. This is the bed. <laughs> okay, who's, where are our disciples? Can you be a disciple? I won't entice you with a chicken hat. There we go. Okay, where are we up to, Emma? I'm so confused. <laughs> We haven't started yet. <laughs> okay, who have we got though? Who, who have okay, we got? so we've got Jesus. Hands up, Jesus. There was a beard for Jesus, but that's fine because we felt he might. Yeah, let's do that. That would add some gravitas to the right, whole Ethan. scenario. Yes, and this? another beard, thanks. Don't forget your badge, soldier. Soldier. That's what it feels like to be a real man, buddy. All right? <laughs> excellent, excellent. So introducing, you're going to come step forward so the crowd can follow. <laughs> Introducing Jesus. Next, woo-hoo. <laughs> Next up, we have Soldier. Who's a soldier? Yeah. Oh, we need a gyrus. We need a, a gyrus. Yeah. We need, we we need, need a, man a man who is ready to be. <laughs> okay, yeah, Elijah. It, Elijah. Elijah is our gyrus. Come on over, um, buddy. Dan, can you dress him in something? He's a, he's a wealthy a man. Roman yeah, yeah. I yeah. wanted to dress him as a banana. But no one else wanted to. Okay. Do you want? Does Jairus? Does, does Jairus have a red afro? He needs to be afro? a man. He has a household. Jairus has, has a red afro. Yeah. Well, yeah, it looks better than Elton John. He's wealthy. Okay. Excellent. Because there we go in the gloves. Bible remix over here. Cool. Love that. <laughs> Sweetheart, you haven't got anything on. Ruby. And what would Hope. you? What would you like? So, you so d- Hope is having a nap. She decided that she would need to be lying down for this. Yes, that's fantastic. Ruby. You don't want to be anything. Do you want to be rabble that watches? That Would you, do you just want to get away with a tea towel on your head and nothing else? 
Would you like? You would you like to go and sit back down? Okay, you want to sit down? <laughs> we can give you a way out yeah. if you need. <laughs> We're giving you a way out. There we go. Oh, you cool, can sit. cool. You can meet a crowd. <laughs> right. So then we have. So then we have Jairus. It's his household that we'll be talking about today, and his Sorry, daughter buddy. is lying is lying down. She's very sick. She's ill. She's got two blankets. So she can snuggle up. <clears throat> <laughs> and a, the servant who will come running <laughs> and, the, and then <laughs> and then and then the great. rabble the rabble we've got the disciples and the rabble and we'll just go with the flow we'll go with the flow okay. so shall we start reading the words yeah, it's, about, you, it's about time do you want me to read and you can direct because okay. kids are afraid of me alright so we're going to go Mark 5 21 to 25 to start off with and then we're going to skip a little bit when Jesus had again crossed over by boats to the other side of the lake. A large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. So we can be all so, around, all, everyone all around Jesus, we're, listen, we're listening to Jesus. Banana mat, okay. Bye. Then one of the synagogue rulers, rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet. Where's Jairus? Jairus. He's not ready. Jairus, you're going to have to come. <laughs> oh, my God. Jairus... <laughs> Jairus comes to Jesus and falls at his feet. Yeah, I think that may happen anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. I'm so glad you're wearing a banana outfit. I'm so glad you're wearing a banana outfit. Okay, can you fall at Jesus' feet, Jairus? <laughs> Lee, oh my goodness. <laughs> you can tell we planned this. And pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter, this is serious, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her that she will be, so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. So okay. Jairus so. and Jesus stand up and, and walk around to the daughter who's by this point, Hope, Hope, you Stage are invader. lying down really ill. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. So we've got to get a big crowd around so these guys. Okay, we're going to skip the next bit because it's Sunday morning. We don't really need to talk about story. it. We're going to stay with this story. We're going to skip right to 35, okay? While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. So you can say, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Where are, we, where are those guys? Uh, we've got one, two. Come on, James. And. <laughs> Freya. Someone take a picture of that, please. Uh, where are we at? When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. Can we get some crying? <laughs> He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. Whoa. Wow, oh, yeah. So, hey. But they laughed at him. That's the bit that I needed you to respond to, but I didn't say. But they laughed at him. Can we get some laughing? Okay. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand. Where's... Um, Oh, okay, she doesn't... Okay. Um, and said to her, Talitha kum. Do you want to say that? That's good. No? Please, yeah. <laughs> which means, little, you can say this bit if you want, Jesus. Which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Little girl, get up. That's all we need. It, immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. She's healed. Whoa. <laughs> At this, they were completely astonished. Can we get an astonished look from the congregation? Sh shocked face, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. So let's... Give, give, her, something to eat. give her something to eat. Okay. Fantastic. Can we get a round of applause? Well done, everybody. We got through it. We got through it.
Okay, kids, while you're up here, um, Emma's going to explain what's, what you guys are going to do for this next portion. Yeah, um, so we've got some crafts set up in the middle here for the younger ones where you're gonna, you can draw around your hands and decorate them and we're going to talk about the power of, of healing and praying for people and the, and the laying on of hands. Um, for those of you that are too big to draw around your hands, um, I'd like you to make a massive hand. You've got, the challenge is you've got some bubble wrap, some cardboard, some masking tape, some big pieces of paper. You, do you remember like the big gladiator hands, the big foam hands? Yeah? No, you are going to do that, Elijah. Um, I, <laughs> while, while Rob is um, talking, your challenge is how big a hand can you make? Can you work together, the older children, to, to make a big, big hand? And we'll see what you've come up with by the end. Okay? Okay, okay. cool. I think we're going to need uh, maybe one or two uh, other older folk. Um, can, would anyone like to volunteer to get involved? Uh, come on up. Yeah, that's great. I don't need to lynch you up. Just come on up. Okay. Can you see the chaos today? Are we there? Good. Glad you can. All right. Let's get going. How many of you remember when Star Wars came out? Originally? It's my subtle way of asking your age. Really sorry about this, that's my terrible laptop version. Uh, 19, let me just check it real quick. Empire Strikes Back, has anyone seen it? Yeah. Who's seen it? Yeah? Does anyone know the storyline? No. Does everyone know the rough storyline of Star Wars? Looking at you, Nath. I want you to imagine the 20th of May, 1980. Can you remember that? those of you. 20th of May 1980. Uh, it's the day that Empire Strikes Back came out. You're excited. You're pumped up and ready to go. You bought your cinema ticket. You've been and bought your popcorn and whatever else you eat when you watch a film. You've just sat down in a movie theatre and is anyone else getting goosebumps at this point? I am. You just sat down in a movie theatre and someone leans over to you. You've just seen... Bear in mind, you've seen A New Hope, so you kind of know what's going on. You know who Darth Vader is. You know who Luke Skywalker is. Um, you just sit down on your seat, and someone leans over to you and says, Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Can you imagine? What, what, what would your response be? Violence. Violence? <laughs> um, it's pretty astonishing. It's one of the ultimate plot twists in movie, in movie history. It changed the world, in my opinion. <laughs> um, equally, you sat down for Lord of the Rings, slightly more my generation. You sit down, watch Lord of the Rings, and someone says, hey, Frodo actually throws the ring in at the end. Sorry, plot spoiler, if you haven't seen that. Frodo does actually throw the ring in to the, gold, uh, to the furnace at the end. Or, in modern day uh, films, uh, we've got Avengers. And someone leans over to you and says... Again, I've, I've ruined it for you. My point is, no one likes a plot spoiler, do they? No one likes to know the end before the beginning. Because it kind of ruins the story, doesn't it? Kind of ruins it. Like saying it at the Titanic showing, <laughs> hey, it's, it's going to go down. I guess we all knew that anyway. The story we've just read in scripture is a story, I think, um, I'm so sorry, that's so small, but the story we've just read, I'm sure, how many, do we know it? Is it, is it a common story for us? Is it something we've, we've heard before? Um, a lot of preachers do this thing where they say, and of course we all know this story, um, and actually some of us may not know that story. This is a story where we see someone uh, who is dead, and Jesus brings them back to life. In fact, he brings a bit of humour in and says, actually, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, actually, the child is asleep. And everyone else is thinking, oh, my goodness, this child is dead. But actually, Jesus says, get up, Talitha kum. Amazing. Amazing story. It's a story um, that points towards, in my opinion, testimony. It, it backs up and supports the idea that we, we as people... Without Jesus, life physically in front of us, we have now testimony of what Jesus has done in our lives, what the Holy Spirit has done in our lives. We have testimony, we have story. 
Um, we've had three or four stories already of testimony, and no doubt each of you have some sort of story where Jesus may not have healed you physically, but he may have moved in your life. Pauline, so wonderfully last week, t- um, told us, very vulnerably in fact, told us about her fear and how Jesus had met her in a, in a, in a dream, right? Um, and uh, inspired her and challenged her to do something about it. This is a story about testimony. It's a story also designed to build faith. Faith um, is one of those things that uh, I looked in the def- definition of just this morning, uh, and it talks about believing wholeheartedly, completely, truthfully, um, entirely that something is going to happen. Faith. When we talk about healing, faith is one of those words that gets used all the time. In fact, it's the series we're talking about in the summer. This story is designed to build faith. This story is also to remind us that there was a journey, as Ziggy so wonderfully said, there's a journey that goes on with Jesus. Sometimes it happens there and then, in the case of Tracy and Ethan. Sometimes it takes a while. It takes a while for it to happen. Tracy so wonderfully said, my last point for me, it's miraculous. In fact, it's ridiculous, really. When you think about the idea of a miracle, it's kind of ridiculous. So much so that the NHS, we love them so, um, doesn't have a way of explaining it. It's just kind of in the unknown drawer. No one understands it. It's kind of miraculous. It's kind of ridiculous. In this story, Jesus is casual. He's casual. He just walks around a bit. We miss the story out where Jesus heals another woman. He didn't even say anything. She just touched him and healed him. He's casual. He's just walking around. In all of the stories, we see uh, Jesus getting in a boat, going from one end of the lake to the other, walking around up a mountain, up a hill, walking to different places. He is walking everywhere. Jesus has this casualness about him. He's also humorous. At the end, he says, oh, give us something to eat, like nothing's happened. He's humorous. Don't worry, she's just asleep. How many of us would be so shocked at what had just gone on there? And what I love about it is Jesus is really basic. He doesn't go into this full-blown lecture or sermon. He just says, get up, little girl. Don't worry, she's asleep. Don't be afraid. Believe. I love that. As someone who doesn't always understand big words. It's quite nice when someone just says something basic to me and I can respond to it. It's nice. Now, in these stories, we are the crowd quite often, aren't we? We're considered to be the crowd. That's the parallel we can draw. Um, And the crowd in this story, we won't go over it because of time, but in the crowd in this story, don't know why I did that, you can't read it, we are insecure. We're constantly uh, reminding Jesus Please come. Come and save that person. We're insecure. We're anxious because someone's died. In a case of uh, healing that's needed in our lives, there's an anxiety, isn't there? We're not 100% sure that something's going to be fixed. Perhaps you could say we're even unbelieving. Because we're not used to miracles. The NHS, they ain't used to miracles, are they? We aren't used to miracles. We're used to seeing stuff happen in a very natural way. Jesus doesn't do natural, does he? We know that. He doesn't do natural. He does supernatural, as they say. We expect uh, things to work out, and sometimes we expect things not to work out. It's our nature. It's who we are as people, isn't it? We kind of take over. We say, Jesus, come. Don't forget that the girl is dead. Don't forget that the girl is dead. I want to share with you... I don't know where I've gone there. I want to share with you a story of my own uh, testimony. Uh, I was, went to Tanzania in 2013 uh, with my uh, church I used to work for, Ascension. And uh, I had really hurt my back before we left. Playing football, no doubt. Uh, I had this like lower back pain. Uh, anyone ever had back pain before of that kind of level where it's not just like, oh, I've got a bit of a bad back, but this really hurts. I can't get up type of thing. And it vibrates. My back was vibrating 
to the point uh, where you kind of end up doubled over. I'd hurt my back, and we'd flown uh, out to Tanzania, and then we had to get a seven-hour drive from the airport to where we were going. Seven hour. Anyone ever been to Africa before? Um, don't, don't worry, not all of us have. Um, in Africa, the road that we drove in, in Tanzania, for sure, was not concrete. It was not concrete. It was bumpy as you like. Uh, if you've seen Ace Ventura, you, you've seen uh, a good example of what it's like to drive on, a, on an African road. It's kind of like this. And uh, you're bouncing around and not good for back pain. We get there, it's this conference for other vicars from the diocese. 500 people are there. Uh, we, the white Europeans, have been invited to go and sort out Tanzania. <laughs> Detect my sarcasm there. Um, we've been invited to go out to talk um, and to share a little bit of our faith in Western culture. The subject quickly moves to healing, um, and we're asked to go and be part of the, the, the healing prayer team. Now I stand up there, having never seen a healing before in my life, uh, or never really, or, or rather should I say, I have never been a direct um, uh, conduit of healing from God uh, to a person. I've never, I've never laid hands on someone and they, they've said, oh, I'm healed now. It's never happened to me before. There I am, uh, with a translator, praying for a guy with a, heart, uh, with a stomach um, thing. I think it might have been a hernia. Possibly, I can't remember. 2013. I'm praying for him. Uh, the translator's there. Suddenly the translator walks off. I'm like, thanks, man. I hadn't finished, but there's no amen. Um, the, the translator walks off. So I'm like, what do I do? What do I say? So I say, um, and by his stripes, you are healed. The dude doesn't speak English. Uh, suddenly the guy gets a smile. He's no longer doubled over, gets up, runs back to the, to the chair. That's ridiculous. I don't understand it. The guy doesn't speak English. I mean, if we were in this room and I'd said it, you could kind of go from my leading, couldn't you? And by stripes, he is now healed. That was what you would expect to happen, right? But it didn't. So we're seeing these healings all the time. We've got these Kiwi guys, New, New Zealanders. You can kind of see it. The lady with the, um, well, the tall white girl. Um, she, uh, she was with us. They were from New Zealand. They had this big healing uh, emphasis on their ministry and they sort of zeroed in on me day one and they were like praying for me uh, over and over again and it just wasn't happening have you ever been prayed for for healing and it's not happened a few nods and it wasn't happening for me and I was so frustrated first time we're like half an hour the guy's sweaty hands on my back not happening it's not happening. I don't understand why it's not happening. Second time, a couple of days later, the guy comes over and says, how's your back? It's still terrible. Can we pray? Yes, of course you can pray. Let's have it. I want it. I'm done. I'm like, stick a fork in me. I am done. Doesn't happen second time around. I am like, what is the deal with that, God? Why aren't you healing me? What have I done? Have I not, have I not got enough faith? Have I not got enough trust? What is going on? Why aren't you healing me? And then, a few days later, we go out with the bishop to go to do some, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, the bit after baptism, what do you call it? Looking at the Anglicans in the room. Uh, whatever it is, confirmations. We're out doing confirmations in the middle of nowhere, and we pull up um, in a village just outside the village we're supposed to go to. The bishop needs a toilet break. All right. Bishop never goes to the toilet in the village he's going to. Don't know why. So we go to the village before. Turns out the village is a predominantly Muslim village. I get out. It's been like five hours. I get out. My back is throbbing. You, you know what's coming, don't you? It's throbbing. It's vibrating to the point where I am in so much pain. That I'm like, Lord, take me now. They say, how's your back? I'm like... I'm done, seriously, come on now, just pray for me. Let's get it done. So I'm bent over, in pain. They start praying. This Immediately, as soon as the guy's hand touches my back, where it was, the vibrating stops, and I am pain-free. And I had, I'd had my eyes closed until this point. I'd had my eyes closed in the pain I was in. I look up, 
and we see all these lovely women in their bright, colourful uh, headdress, um, looking, staring at me, like, what the heck has just happened? It's ridiculous. Healing is ridiculous. Sometimes it's a journey, and sometimes it happens there and then. There's so much we could go into that. Joel has used uh, a lot of uh, T words recently. I'm going for T words today. In this scripture, we see lots of things. We all have a story. And when life hits, when the chaos hits, we know that it needs to be shared. Secondly, there is tension. What happens when it doesn't? What happens when it doesn't? Quick story. Um, We hear so often that, that, that healing happens. And my question today is, what happens when it doesn't? What happens when it doesn't? Lots of people have talked to me recently about how they've gone away to these big Christian events. It's all been really fluffy and golden and lovely. Um, and what happens when it's not like that? What happens when God doesn't heal? What happens when God doesn't save that child? Me and Tina, we've had an interesting time this summer. Uh, not just for us but our friends too we've experienced loss one of our good friends Esther she passed away after years in fact of um, battling cancer what happens when we experience loss what happens when it doesn't work what do we do with that what happens when our hope is as small as it is on the screen That says hope, by the way. We have hope, though it may feel small. We do not know his plan. As Tracy said, it's mysterious. We don't get it. Those people didn't know God's plan. We know that he sees. We know that his spirit is with us. That he moves to us and that he moves for us. But we cannot know. In this story, we see that God moves. In some of the stories we've experienced, we felt like God hasn't moved. And I suppose at the end of all of this, what I want us to come to is that although we have hope that's small, we have a hope that's big. And it's in this scripture, I think, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless grace, groans. <laughs> we cannot know, but we can pray. We can pray. We are to know that he is good today, that beyond pain he is here. Even when we wonder where he was, we can know that he is here. That's all I got this morning for us. may feel a bit gloomy. Um, But I believe in this thing. As nitty gritty as it is in real life, this is what we have. This is what we have for Peter. This is what what Mark and Kat had for, for Hope. This is what Pauline has. This is what Tracy had for Ethan. We have hope. We have hope. We have hope for our children that they will know and love the Lord. We have hope that when we have an injury or some ailment, that God will meet us. We have hope. Me and Tina, we are choosing to hope. We are choosing to see life first even though we cannot know. So, Mark, if you'd come. I want to give us an opportunity to have hope. Even if we don't have words, as it says in Romans, even if we don't have words, we can know that the Spirit can move in us. And I don't know if you have today uh, any of those worries or concerns about yourself or about a family member or a friend you don't have words for, but you know you need to see God move. 
we want to give you an opportunity to, uh, to pray, to pray about that, to minister to that. I haven't given our ministry team, whatever that looks like. I'm opening it to everyone, okay? If you want prayer, lean over. I'm guessing you're sat next to your, your pals. If you want prayer, lean over and talk to them and ask them to pray for you. Alec, we had a wonderful moment, me and Alex, at the back there at the start. He, he just said, can I pray for you? And that's the deal. So Mark, if you want to um, play some whatever it is you play, um, to give us an opportunity uh, to, to ask for some prayer. Would you bow your heads with me? <laughs> oh Lord, thank you for uh, being with me as I've rambled my way through this this morning. Lord, we thank you for these guys behind us their wonderful authenticity, their realness. Lord, we thank you that every story we had um, started with young people and you have moved in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would move in our lives this morning. Those of us that need to hear you, to experience you, we pray that you would touch our lives, meet us, whether it's in the now or in the journey. Lord, we just give you this opportunity now to move in your spirit in our lives. Amen.